Welcome to the Sunny Stampin' Studio. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create your own holly leaves using circle and oval punches, and I'm going to show you how you can add a beautiful shimmer to fun foam letters using Stampin' Up's new shimmer paint. So why don't we get started? First thing you're going to want is to prep your letters so that they have time to dry by the time you're ready to use them. So grab yourself a scrap piece of paper, some dotto adhesive, and then just put a little bit of dotto onto your scrap piece of paper. Now grab your fun foam letters and just gently press it onto the dotto so it sticks. You're then going to want to grab your shimmer paint. Now I'm using frost white. It also comes in silver and gold. Give it a shake and grab a little paintbrush and you can get this from the dollar store. You're going to pick up a little bit of paint from your bottle and then start painting a very fine layer of the shimmer paint onto the fun foam. Now you want to be careful you don't do too much so that when it dries you don't end up with big gobs of it. Now once you're done painting your letters, you can set them aside to dry. Next thing you're going to need to prep are your holly leaves. Now to do that, you're going to need Stampin' Up's Wide Oval Punch. You're going to need to punch that out of dusty Durango cardstock. So I've already gone ahead and done that. Now grab a pencil and start to draw the general shape of the holly leaf. As you can see, I'm just drawing a series of curved lines onto my circle. Now once you've done that, you're going to need Stampin' Up's one and a quarter inch circle punch and their one inch circle punch. Flip your punch over so that you can see your lines in the window and then position it in the circle punch and create a little sort of a half circular punch there. You can see now I've done that on both sides and you're just following the guidelines that you drew. Now I've done my first four punches with the one and a quarter inch circle punch and I'm going to do the last two on either side using my one inch circle punch. And you'll notice as I'm punching that I'm going from side to side rather than doing them all in a row. And that way it ensures that your leaf ends up being somewhat symmetrical. There you go. So you've got your holly leaf. Once you've done that, grab a scrap strip of cardstock, put a little fold in it, and then grab some snail adhesive and put a tiny bit of snail adhesive on the fold. You're then going to stick that to the back of your holly leaf. What this does is allow you to hold it without getting your fingers all messy. So grab some crystal effects. This is just a clear adhesive that's very strong from Stampin' Up! and you're going to gently squeeze and place a thin line of crystal effects all along your holly leaf. Now I like to keep a pin in mind when I'm working because I find that the tip does clog fairly quickly and that helps keep it clear while I'm working with it. As you can see, I'm just creating an outline of crystal effects along the edges of my leaf. And the more you flatten the line of adhesive, the flatter your glitter is going to be. Yeah, there we go. Once you've got your lines all around the outside, you're then going to draw a vein down the center, and then you're going to draw little intersecting lines between the center vein and the points. And don't worry about if it's different thicknesses because that just adds to the look and to the charm of it. So once you've finished doing that, I'm just going to plug my bottle back up and grab some Stampin' Up! Champagne Glitter. This is a very fine glitter and you're going to hold your leaf over your container and sprinkle it onto your crystal effects like so. Now once you've done that, you're just going to give it a little tap and then set it aside to dry. Now you're going to want to do three leaves like that. Once the leaves have dried, you just want to take a stipple brush and then brush off any of the excess glitter. And that makes sure you don't have that coming off in your hands or your recipient's hands. Now by this point, your letter should be dry. And 
I've gone ahead and attached them to my card. And what I've done is I've started at the very end of the word and I'm working my way to the beginning. And that ensures even spacing and that your letters or your word doesn't run off the edge of your cardstock. Now to stick my letters, I'm using Crystal Effects glue. And I'm just putting a very small amount on my letter, just enough to hold it but I don't want a big gob because I don't want it to come gushing out the sides. And there, I'm going to very carefully hold it in my fingers and place it on my card where I want it to be. And just hold it down for a couple of seconds so that the crystal effects has time to set. Now this is um, a 5x5 five five piece of designer paper which I've matted onto a 5 one 8 by 5 one 8 piece of real red. I'm now going to flip that over grab some snail adhesive and place about a one and a half inch line on either side near the top edge. Grab yourself about a six inch piece of ribbon and you're going to position it along the top of the card and then bring the ends around back and stick them to the snail adhesive. Once you've done that, you're going to want to grab a foam mat and paper piercing tool and you're going to grab your leaves. Now by this time, you can just detach them from the scrap piece and I'm just going to position one on my card front so I know where to pierce my holes. So I'm going to pierce three holes and make sure that when you do that, it goes right through the ribbon, the DP and the cardstock. I'm piercing my holes in a triangular fashion because I'm now going to use real red rhinestone brads to create the look of the holly berries. So put all, and if you need to, you may need to re pierce the holes if your ribbon shifted at all. So place your brads in, push them in, and then flip your cardstock over and open up the prongs in the back. Now what you may find you need to do is twist around the prongs a little bit so that they don't overlap one on top of the other because that'll just add extra bulk to your card when you assemble it. So once you've got the prongs open, you're now ready to stick your leaves. So you're going to need your three leaves and Stampin' Dimensionals and you're going to put two Stampin' Dimensionals on the back of each of the leaves. Now I've already gone ahead and done that for the other two. So peel off the backing and then position the leaves on your card front around the holly, around the berries, like so. You're now going to grab two swirls that were die cut with the Sizzix Swirl Scribbles die and you're first going to determine what their placement on your card is going to be. So once you've determined how you want them, you're going to take them, flip it upside down and put a little bit of snail adhesive in that center piece. I'm going to grab that, flip it back the way I want and just tuck it under my ribbon. So do the same with the second one. And then once you're happy with your placement, just push it down so that it sticks to the designer paper. Last thing you're going to do is grab a five and a quarter by five and a quarter dusty Durango card, and you're going to place snail adhesive on your card front. You're then going to take the matted DP that you just decorated, and you're going to center it on your card front and stick down. And that's all there is to it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I look forward to stamping with you again.